Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative and today we're gonna be talking about this guy. What is in my camera bag in 2020? Now, a lot of what I do, you guys, is both for car photography and videography. I get hired to take car photos and car videos. So some of the stuff that you are gonna see in this bag is representative of shooting both photos and videos, but it's all gonna be helpful for you if you're a car photographer anyways, for the most part. All right, so first things first, guys, this is the Peak Design Everyday Backpack. It is the 20 liter version. I bought this one probably three years ago now, and it's been with me every single day. It's an incredible bag. It's waterproof. It has like all kinds of pockets and stuff for like little gadgets, gadgets, gizmos, just whatever you really need to put stuff in. It's just so practical. They thought of so much stuff that you can put in here. Uh, I really like it. I found the 20 liter to be more than I need. They've got these cool kind of little side pouches that you can zip into, and it's really cool when you have like the backpack slung over, you just take one off, and then you can unzip the side and grab your camera out, zip it back up, sling it back up, and you're good to go. So I found it to be incredibly helpful. You get kind of these winglets on both sides so you can grab stuff out of either side, which is kind of cool. All right, so as well as having those side pockets here, guys, you also have this top flap, which can hold a whole bunch of stuff and a cool little magnetic slot here. Where I'll show you what goes in there as well. It also has laptop pouch up here and some other cool things they thought of is that you can actually take this off and um, you know if you're at the airport or whatever you just slide that into like the the railing of your suitcase something like that um, these side pockets where you hold my Joby tripod thing all right so let's get into what is inside my bag and what I shoot on a daily basis the first side we'll go into is where I keep my main camera this is where I sling my when I sling my backpack off, this is kind of what I'm grabbing first. And this is my main camera right here. This is my Sony A7 Mark III. It's a full frame camera that shoots some like pretty incredible photos. I've shot with the Canon 5D Mark II, Canon 5D Mark III, moved over to the Sony A6300 because we were doing a lot of hybrid shooting at the time and Canon wasn't really offering 4K video. Moved up from the 6300 to the 6500. All that to say, when the Sony a7 III came out, was blown away uh, at the hybrid capabilities of this camera. So you'll actually see that I've got two in here for when I'm doing hybrid shooting. One that I use solely for my photography, and the other one I shoot my video and B-roll with. Currently on here, I've got the Sony 24 to 105 G lens. It's image stabilized. The aperture four is good enough for me for most scenarios because this camera is so good in low light. I'm not super afraid of kind of having to crank the ISO a little bit. Really amazing, super diverse camera. I will be doing a video on how I set this up for hybrid shooting, so both photo, video, 4K 24 frames per second, and then also how I switch to 120 frames per second. Super fast, like butter. So that is slot number one, guys. I've got my little microphone for when I'm recording videos. This is the Rode Video Micro, I think. It's the mini one, and it's got this little windscreen device on it, which is uh, harder to get off than I thought apparently. I did watch a YouTube video where this guy actually connects this string down here and then it doesn't become so floppy anymore. Whereas like if it's not connected, man, this thing just like flails around all day. So little trick with the video micro is just keep that connected and pop and lock that. If we go to the other side, we've got my Joby Gorilla Pod. I think this is the 3K version. I didn't feel that I needed the super weighted one, but this does really, really great. I have run into the same issues where these are starting to kind of get light now that it's winter and starting to crack a little bit, which is whatever. But this tool up top here, guys, this is the coolest thing. This actually screws off. And for a lot of like my car reviews or anything, I actually screw that four thirds onto like so many things and then it gives you a really nice balanced ball head. I gotta stick this on my tripods and then use this to level it instead of the tripod, tripod legs because that can just get a little bit annoying. So love that. Okay, so then once you get inside here guys, I've got my B cam which is the same as my A-cam. It's another Sony A7 Mark III. On this one, I've got the Sigma 35 millimeter art lens, the 1.4. This is hands down my favorite lens of all time. If I had to just pick one lens to use forever, this would be it. Definitely, no questions asked. Especially because with the Sony a7 III, you have that crop in function. So if you're shooting 4K video, you actually can crop in because it's using 6K 
and compressing it. So when you crop in, it's actually, you're not losing any detail at all, which turns the 35 mil into pretty much like a 50, 55 mil. So you're getting two amazing lenses with a 1.4 f-stop. So as well, you do have to get a converter of some sort for the Sony to go to the Sigma. This is the EF lens mount. I'm using the Sigma MC11 adapter, which I've found to have zero issues with when I'm in continuous focus mode. This thing just like locks onto eyeballs, whatever, all the same functions you get from the Sony a7 III. You also might be wondering why there's a Canon lens cap on there. Well, the reality is I'm using these kind of newer thread adapters because this is actually a 67 mil and a lot of the ND filters and circular polarizing filters that I have screw onto a 72 mil because even the Sigma 18 to 35 that's on that camera right now is a 72 mil thread. So this way I can kind of just adapt all of my ND filters to these lenses really, really quickly. And this Canon lid just happened to fit. So that's why it's on there. Okay guys, so that's pouch number two. Now, as we come up to the top pouch here, which is a bit of a gong show, this is where the backpack maybe fails. They do give you cool like compartment flap things that help a little bit, but for the most part, it can get a little bit messy. Inside here is where I keep all my accessories. So uh, I've got my hard drive. This is just a WD four terabyte. This thing keeps most everything for a long time. And then I keep some backups elsewhere. We've got the USB-C to USB 3.0 adapter for that, so I can plug it into my MacBook. We've got a charger for USB-C, so I can charge like the Ronin S, the GoPros, things like that. Uh, speaking of the GoPro, woo, we keep that in here as well, so this way I can like mount it onto the car at any given time and take cool videos uh, or vlog or whatever. I don't really vlog too much with this thing. We've got the charger for my MacBook Pro uh, laptop so that that can go with me anywhere as well. What else? This is like opening a stocking on Christmas. We've got two extra batteries for the Sony. One trick that I do when I'm out shooting, cause things can get a little bit hectic. When I have it flipped up the right way, that means that this battery's charged and ready to go. When it's dead, I always put them in upside down to know, well, upside down is dead. And then I know not to go back in for that battery. So that's one little trick that I do for on location shooting. I've got all my ND filters, polarizer filters, whatever. Uh, most of them are the 72 mil thread, so they can go on that lens there, as well as the 35 mil. We've got the circular polarizer filter and the variable ND filter, so I can switch between photography and videography quite seamlessly. And as well, we've got the 77 mil, both the circular polarizing filter and the variable ND for the Sony uh, 24 to 105 so that I can be kind of moving as fast as I can with both lenses. Again, being a hybrid shooter, you gotta be able to move pretty quick and get as much done as you can in a short period of time. All right, so then we've got this like little, little magnet flap here. And what I keep in here are my AirPods. Guys, I wasn't like a huge fan of these AirPods when I upgraded from the first version. And then I went on a plane. These are absolutely amazing. When you're on an airplane and you turn on the noise canceling, the whole world just went It was so sick. So that's when I grew to really appreciate the new AirPod Pro uh, and the noise canceling feature. Anyway, that's where we keep it up there. We've also got um, iPhone chargers as well as USB-C to iPhone charger because I'm in that awkward transition with the MacBook Pro and the USB-C and it's, well, it is what it is. We've got a lens cleaning cloth, which comes in handy all the time. And then this little tool, uh, it's a little Gerber mini tool, the Gerber Dime. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of stuff on it. It's got scissors, pliers. Uh, one thing that I use a lot on it's the screwdriver to get plates on and off of cameras if I need to. Uh, but that's just a little tool that comes in handy every now and again. And again, I'll try and link as much of the stuff in the description below so that you guys can go take a peek at it if you want. As well in here, guys, we've got a few little side pockets. This is where I keep all my adapters for my iPad. Again, in that awkward stage where I've got a whole bunch of dongles. Wired headphones, just in case, you know, I need them or my wife needs them. You always gotta be prepared. The little adapter for Apple. We've got more. This is where I keep uh, a pack of gum because you never know when you're going to go into a meeting or you guys might be meeting a girl or a boy and 
You don't want your breath to stink. Keep my business cards in here, as well as any of the essential cards that I don't want to keep in my wallet. Again, this thing goes with me everywhere, so. Okay guys, and then last but not least, up in this top slot, we've got the uh, iPad Pro. We've also got the 13 inch MacBook Pro. I've got this thing pretty well specced out so I can edit videos on it. But for the most part, I use the iMac, which you may have seen in my other videos to do a lot of my heavy editing. The Apple Pencil, a cool Swiss knife, a pen, because you always need a pen, the spare key to our SUV, and the dongle life. So this is what I use for my MacBook Pro as well. This is the Dodo Cool one. I found it works pretty well. Uh, the last thing I will show you that I cannot clearly pack into this is the DJI Ronin S. Uh, the way that I typically do my running and gunning is I've got the Sony a7 III with the 24 to 105 that I'm gonna go and shoot photos with. Then I will balance this with the other a7 III in the Sigma 35 mil because I find that just to be an absolute B-roll monster. And I've got this little accessory on top here that allows me just to screw this in so that it's pre-balanced for the most part and I should be able to go right away uh, as quickly as possible. As well, I've got the small HD monitor on here which is amazing. It's like fairly bright. Actually, I'm super impressed with the quality of it. So that's the last thing that I take with me on my shoots so that I can be as quick and efficient as a hybrid shooter as possible. So that's it, guys. That is everything that I put in my camera bag. Sometimes I can squish a little bit more. Sometimes I have to take some things out to adapt. If there's any questions that you guys have on the gear that I use, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll help you as much as I can. I will definitely be linking some of these items in the box below. Some of my favorite items if you do click those links guys they kick back a little bit to me because that's like the amazon thing which is super nice as well guys if you enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up as it helps the channel out a lot you can subscribe down here and click a bell so that you know what i'm going to be posting you can also feel free to check me out over here on instagram because that's where i post a lot of my cool photos and videos and i love to chat with you guys over there so please slide into the dms over there other than that i just really appreciate you guys watching this i hope that it's been helpful for you or or at least somewhat entertaining. And until next time, guys, be safe and have a great rest of your day. Peace.